So, with the welcome, my great pleasure to introduce uh, Magnus uh, Botnan, who will be speaking to us on multidimensional persistence. Thanks, Magnus. Um, I'm just going to see if this works. I think I'm. Yeah, this is nice. Uh, so, I'm talking. Of, yeah, thank you for inviting me to speak here. Um, I heard from Henry that a lot of people watch these videos afterwards. And also, nice that so many people would come and watch this talk right now. Very happy about these results. So I hope you will be too. And so I've gone through this three written slides things. I've never done this before. I also never given a talk by just listening like talking to my computer before. So it's a first for anything. Anyways, it's a project on multi persistence with Libre, which I suppose many of you know. And I'm going with Stefan Oppermann and you want to both are algebraists um, and who are interested in applied topology. And like this research is very much motivated by things in applied topology, but some interesting results not directly applicable to our thing. Uh, like the more general results have come to this. this talk, I will focus on the stuff. Real are topology. All right. Let's see. How do I go forward here? Yeah. Um, so I just wait to the information for this multi-dimensional persistence is through this two-parameter clustering. So that like you have you clustering with multiple pairs. For instance, you have like in a horizontal direction. You just increase the radius of your horse, like doing a normal single linkage clustering. And in the vertical direction, you doesn't over increase the density of the point, meaning that you're going to add more points depending on the density of that point. So, from the direction, you increase the radius of the balls. Vertical direction, you add more points. You can apply H0 to the additional space, and that's going to give you this two dimensional persistence module. So, we just like comes here, you just apply H0 to so get a bottom left to get a K squared, and middle bottom row K squared, and K, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really easy to write down these systems. Now, what we observe is, of course, that all the morphisms in this case, they're all epimorphisms. I may look to this later, but, but it's going to be of importance to part is talking. And I also want to men mention, if you see in the top right corner, there is a paper by Carlson and Moni, 2010, where they consider multi-parameter clustering, which go up to their seminal paper on, on like one pair clustering, where they prove that single linkage clustering or H persistence is a unique clustering satisfying certain very conditions and now in, for multiple multi parameters is multi to the clustering, which is this unique clustering scheme. However, this paper didn't receive much attention, I think, largely because of the infeasibility of multi persistence. But maybe some hope, anyways. Language will be quivers, and we just want to let a finite directed graph with. Set Q0 and arrows Q1. We will be able with having self loops and arrows. So we're going to have this loop one quiver, this L1, which is going to be a single vertex with a loop to itself. This two single point with two loops to itself. And now we have this, I didn't name it for some reason, but this A3, which you know from ordinary persistence, where you have, two, or N vertices for that matter, and you have linear. Just like linear, linear, or dimensional guide to the right, which we'll return to later. Now, an edge or an arrow in this one with S of E, B, force, and T of E be the target. Right? So it is arrow E from one to two, then S of E is one, and T of E is two. Good graph theoretic stuff. Now I'm going to add a representation to such a that we 
take to every um, vertex, and then you're going to associate a finite, finite dimensional vector space. And if you have an arrow in this, then of course, if you let's say an arrow, arrow E, then you have a so D and you will have a vertex set, the vector space sitting over the target of E. So you're going to have a little bit linear map associated to this edge. So you click to any edge, you associate a linear map, and to every vertex, you associate a vector space. So this versus one arrow, you just associate B1 and B2, that is A, A2, or L1 loop, just V with A acting on V, or L2, you have this A and B acting on V. Representation is thin. Still, this, the dimension of the vector spaces, like for each vertex, the dimension of the space is at most one. So the left here, is thin up to the right here is thin. and emphasis we're going to work on algebraically closed field it's not clear for everything i'm going to say today i think most things actually go through without assuming this but i don't have a technical if you have two such representations And we can talk about a morphism between these two representations. So an F from V to W is just a of linear map. F to WI for every vertex. Such the following diagram commutes. And the diagram is just this diagram for every edge, right? So if you take any edge, it's going to be the same as going V along this edge and then map to W. This could be as first mapping to W and then going in only inside of W. So this is standard. And of this, this will be the category. And we'll this rep Q, the category representation is of Q. And morphism, in this case, all these eyes are like. Given the addition of, um, you know, a morphism, morphism, we can talk about in the composables. <coughs> we, if you have representations of the same quiver, in order to, to sum, you just do everything component twice. A acting on V and this B acting on W. Let's define a direct sum being the direct vector spaces and a direct sum of linear maps. That's straight same for this over here, you just do everything component wise. So straightforward to this direct sum. And say that such a V is in the composable. If it's written as a direct sum, let's say V is a direct sum of is isomorphic to direct sum of W1 and W2, then E1 is zero or W2 is zero. And it's straightforward to show this setting that any rep decomposes into direct sum of linear composables. I mean, an inductive argument. It's Either it does decompose <laughs> or it does decompose, and you take the smaller pieces and you can just continue inductively until you, you have, I mean, because you're going to lower the vector space dimension every time. And since you have a finite quiver and a finite dimension of vector space, in the end, you have to have with a decomposition and representation. It's all too hard to prove this Remark Schmidt theorem, which is that this decomposition, this decomposition is in fact. Uh, essentially unique, meaning that if you take another decomposition, the summons occur occurring in this other decomposition will up to isomorphism. So then, now it's us to the goal because we have now have that we have a representation. A representation can always be written as a direct composables. 
show you what the Indica Pulse tools can look like in the topic of today's talk. And this kind of representation type Q you can have is this fire representation type. And this Q if there is only a finite number of isomorphism classes, I mean the composables in rep Q. In rep Q is like what are the isomorphism classes of the composables? If there's a finite number, well then Q has fine representation type. Uh, very poor persistent homology, the very backbone is the fact that um, like one is a finite type and all these things the composables are thin, right? Because if you now come to the inner of this A3, we know that the inner that you have found is line field K. So we're the first vertex or the middle vertex or the third vertex and see whatever else. Or you can have consecutive guys and by the identity morphisms, like the K and then identity morphisms between them. Or the, yeah, K and then identity morphisms. These are all the this also holds, of course, more general meaning that if you have n, then all the composables will be these interval modules. They will look like this. So you can identify them with intervals, and thus you can associate the collection of intervals to any persistence module. And this is where we get the bars and why persistence works so much. All right, so Gabriel. When I type that, Q is either this AN, so I mean, the arrows can go in whatever direction you want. These side persistence, of course, we studied in our field. Or EN, which is essentially this linear guy, but at the very end, you can go up or down. Or, yeah, you can go in direction. Um, E6, E7, E8. Uh, but I don't think DN or the E6, E7, E8. E8 have been really studied in applied topology. I'm wrong, though, but uh, now consider on the quiver. Let's L1. So remember that this L1 is just a single L flip. Uh, we got a question given two representations of this L1. When are morphic? So, the redefinition on isomorphism, we see that this is V and acting on V and B acting on W will be isomorphic. It represents an isomorphism X from E to W, such as rightmost diagonals. So, XA is going to be equal to. X. But now A, the sort X, and A is going to be equal to X. X. We that A is similar to B. Not from, yeah, so rings, modules, or some elements, elementary, of course, that A matrix. Or another bracket closed field is similar to the matrix J, where this Jordan uh, block sit on diagonal. So we have this uh, block is just that you have this lambda diagonal element of the field, where it's all diagonal and super diagonal, you only have ones, and there's zero everywhere else. So, I mean, also you take A, so we know A is going to be similar. Um, meaning that in terms of representation, A is going to be isomorphic to uh, these geometries acting on the same dimensional vector space. In order to see that, if you take, the, let's say, Ken, I have a Jordan matrix acting on Kn, but it splits off into summons. So you get like one summon for each block in the matrix. Logic. You see that, that n represented L1 is going to be isomorphic to a dark sum of the 
documentation. Same logic, you can also show that and um, follows that these Jordan blocks are also, also in I mean, follows from standards about Jordan matrices. If you like R and lambda, we this notation of L has K to the power of N over the word acts on itself at this J M lambda so, you know, and then and matrix with lambda along the diagonal. These are indecomposable, and all representations can be written as a direct sum of this. In particular, on lambda, this section for n greater equal to 1 and lambda in our k, it's a complete of pairwise non isomorphic indecomposables. For sure, we have a family of indecomposables. But we do know what the indigo pulses look like. Very nice one per family. I mix your n is just this parameter by this lambda. This way. More just extensively by, by Rugilia. And in this paper with Tamale, where they con consider the rotation of this, they consider this object, which is almost, I mean, it's very true. Related in this circular, I mean, it's like persistence for circular valid maps or something like this. Circle maps and, and this A and tilde quivers mean that you go in a circle, but the arrows alternate. And the compulsibles in this setting are essentially the one here. So you just put Kn over each vertex. With and over one of the arrows, you search a Jordan, Jordan block. You have some other events, which you think about as being, you start over a vertex, and you can go, let's say, whatever, just go counterclockwise. This matters. Let's go counterclockwise. And then you count times the loop pass through over a vertex, right? In this case, I draw on this Thing. So top one, topmost one should have like k squared. We start k squared, but if I go down to the right, it should be k. It's just the number of times loops passes. And the linear map is then defined by which of the loop you map to in the next one. So if you go to this one, to you go to the top and then move to the right down, you see that there's just be a k in the source. And it's going to map to the second time it passes through the top vertex. The more linear morphism will be zero and one. And these are all the compulsibles in this setting. So again, I mean, that number of loops, we know very well what they do look like. Yes? Uh, so go back there. Uh, did the matter where in the diagram with the, uh, the Jordan block? Yeah, well, some of them will be isomorphic and some of them will be not. Be, but add the Jordan block somewhere else, and I, then I could get something which is isomorphic or not isomorphic. So, okay. so you, you can just pick a particular spot and put all the Jordan blocks there, and that gives you all the indecomposables up to isomorphism. No, there could be ones which this one is not isomorphic. To. You have to put them at all the possible spots to get all of them. Uh, I think the spots. Will be isomorphic, so you can identify a certain spot. If you run this community diagram and you see where you can push the morphisms, because yeah, so like the, you push this isomorphism around, and sometimes it matches up, and sometimes it doesn't. But I'm not exactly sure where. Funny. And there's a similar thing happen with the other indecomposable. On the same now, the bottom right. Here or yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess there, there's a lot of symmetry in this particular one, but um, yeah, this one is uniquely defined by where your uh, loops are. So you go around and you stop whatever, and that's going to give you an incompatible. All the incompatibles look like this, which are not Jordan blocks. So, okay. Thanks. Just the just big picture. So you have indecomposables of the form on the left, where you have Ken in each spot and one Jordan block. And then the, 
the indecodables on the right, I was a little confused by those. This is one example that you have drawn on the bottom right? Yeah, but in general, all the composables which are not Jordan block types, uh -huh. they were of the form. You pick your favorite vertex, you just go around and you stop at another vertex, uh -huh. and then these will all be in the composable and the ones which are not the Jordan block form. So these are one maps all the way around? You see, because you see, if you go to the left of the picture, you see that there are these vertices, which the loop passes twice over both the vertices. Uh -huh. So I made that identity matrix between the, the two case squares and the two identity matrix over there. So it's, uh, um, it's easy. You're going to run. Is either um, matrix will be an identity matrix or an injection or a surjection. So you can drop at most one in dimension or increase at most one in dimension along the arrows. Huh. Yeah, I guess the thing, the thing maybe missed the first time I looked at it was the the, the, light, the light blue circle around. This is kind of an integral module that's wrapped around the circle. Yeah. And you're getting the dimension of squared versus k based on how many times that the blue passes that vertex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I guess if you pass to so like the universal cover, then it's, it really is an integral module. Yes, that is true. That's also a reason. I see. Okay. I see. Being an integral module and then just wrapping it around. Yep. So given this, um, we are led to this definition of a tame representation type. And definition is not formal. It can be, it's not hard to make it formal, but I didn't want to go into too much of this algebra. And the basic idea is that, so first, let's, let's say you have this representation in V, and then we define the total dimension of V, or the dimension of V. To be the sum, rather, there should be the sum of the dimension of vi for every i. I wonder if I could pull the right here. No, yeah, I don't know. Um, so it's also be the sum up there of the dimensions. And we set q obtain representation type if the dimension d exists a finite number of one parameter families. This is where I'm being vague. Like, what does this mean? Of indecomposables covering all but a finite number of indecomposables I mentioned. D. Okay. So here we see that, that is Jordan block guys. So we have dimension out. So the six vertices. So if I fix my dimension to be so k squared over all of them, so mention will be twelve. Then we have this Jordan. We'll amortize all for dimension 12, or possibly a finite number, which you get from going around this loop. So this one family will not contain these loop, these interval modules, but it sure all of them. So this is an IE for term representation type. The one parameter families with a dozen families depending on the parameter lambda, like they depend polynomially only polynomially this lambda, and everything except for a finite number. So then tame, meaning that okay, it's not finite, you can find it not to be finite. So it's not finite, but it's also you, you know fairly well what's going on. And go as another term, saying that Q is tame, then Q is one of these follow one of the following. So we take our linear equivalent from before is a n. Now you take from the last and the last, and you connect them by to get the surrogate. So now we just talk. This d n tilde, where instead of going up and down at the end, you can go up and down at the start as well. Or is e seven tilde and e eight tilde. 
This is by Gabriel. Okay. okay. But now your uh, Q to be this L2, where you have a single vertex and two self arrows. Self with. Then some more fit is V, A and B acting on V, and W and A prime and B prime acting on W. They're going to be isomorphic. If an object exists in isomorphism from V to W, such that A is equal to X inverse A prime X, and B is equal to X inverse B prime X. Meaning that B are pretty similar to A prime B prime. So all the same as we had before. Meaning we can do like this Jordan block trick, blah, blah, blah. And we should get some kind of uh, understanding of the ending of puzzles. The thing is, it's not the case, and it's actually not possible to a certain degree, I would say not possible. Because classifying pairs of pairwise symmetries is known in algebra, linear algebra to be a hopeless problem. Like geometry, we consider these orbits. So if you could classify pairs of pairwise similar matrices, matrices then you could do so for n matrices, and the same level of complexity to this. So we have this n tuple. From A and B1, this is an invertible X such that AI is equal to X inverse BIX for I from 1 to N. Or contains this word problem for finitely presented groups, uh, which would be undecidable. And given all this, I mean, the isomorphism classes are the composable. This L is pretty much hopeless because then you would gain, they'd be able to solve these other problems as well. We've studied these problems forever, and it's just not possible. To, uh, so <clears throat> then, like the prototype for what it means to have one representation type, a hopeless problem. So make this one we say if you have two quick we said if we have two quick q and q prime representation embedding from representation category of q to representation category of q i should be a q prime there which take composables in the composables and so is morphic to w in rep f of v is isomorphic to f of w the f of is isomorphic to f of w and ref q prime. So, so like the complexity of understanding the composables, that uh, if you understand q prime, then you also understand q. And find q to be a wild representation type. If it's a representation embedding from, from this quiver into the representation category of q. Meaning q is bad as L2. Uh, and it's more general, and it also holds in what I'm going to talk about later. But just because simplicity, just assume that Q is a pulse it, so like self loops or anything funny going on. That Q is finite, tame, or wild. Uh, this is a big term in our theory. But that means that from Gabriel's theorem that, well, we know the finite ones are and what the tame ones are, but then the, all the other ones must be just as crazy as L2, and we're just, just like, no hope. What we can do is we can set relations to a representation. You can do this in many ways, adding some kind of relation, something to be. Uh, Whatever could be equal to zero, whatever. But for this talk, I will just talk about things commuting. So, for instance, if you consider this guy to the left, in with relations, it's just going to be it's going to be tame, but not representation type because it's one of these guys here. However, if I force this square to commute and I consider representations, then if I had all possible sets, then so many composables down here. So, I mean, 
basic way you can plot out like and if you have both then they have to be consecutive and kind of identity maps. <clears throat> and when you start adding relations, some things which used to be tame are not finite. Which is not covered by Gabriel's theorem because Gabriel only considers stuff with no relations. So this leads us to multiple D models. When you add this commutativity, the ones we get from D. So let's add a notation. I'm not sure if it's the best, but let Q be equal to this M times N, this bracket notation, quiver on M times N verses, such so where it commutes. So in three, you have these nine verses and all the squares commute. That's our familiar with it from persistence. And that's theorem by Carlson's Morgan and my question is thesis. I don't think it's in the paper, but for sure it's in, in my thesis. Um, it says that, that there are NH uh, um, and quiver and N representation of the quiver then find the bifiltration of CW complex, which yields this representation in the homology. So, um, In all, it's just as hard as wild problems. And making all the arrows go to the right and up. Yeah, yeah. And particular uh, example, so later on they'll actually go to right and down, but in general they should go, <laughs> mostly they will go right and up. Okay, but they're not allowed to alternate right and left right now. Not that, yeah. no. And um, so, an Emerson, they used what is known as all standard item theory, which is a way of multiple isomorphisms between them to show that these two times three and two times four are a finite type of uh, problem material science. In fact, um, to get back to your question, in the paper, they, they also consider a different orientation of the rows. But this talk, I will just assume that they all go to the right and upwards. Um, we add one more. So they call these commutative ladders. So if you add one more vertex in horizontal directions, you get this 2.5. Then they tame. But for, for n equal to 6 and 2, and 2 times wild. Um, I don't like to prove. I think you can embed some simple quivers. Anyways, and times three and also is a while. This is a non trivial proof. Okay. Yeah, ask yourself, what are you watching? And this is from, from a paper of Yarson where they found the item theory, and these are all the decomposables of the case where you have. That's four times two commutative ladder. Of course, the, the linear maps in the representations are not here. But if you like any entry here, you can either eight this and the inverse represent the dimension of the vector space over that vertex. So some are just one dimensional, but you have some in the composables which have two done over certain vertices. Three dimensions as far as Okay. Now, let's return to this initial problem we talked about in, in clustering. Uh, we observe that all the horizontal morphisms are now vertical, uh, are epimorphisms. I don't know if vertical is supposed to be all horizontal morphisms or epimorphisms. So maybe now let's consider you know, like something in less something even stricter. So instead of having general two times n additivity, let's also assume that all the horizontal morphisms are amorphisms. This happens. First, you need some notation. So this arrow, this horizontal arrow to the right, m times n will be subcategory of m rep m to n. 
where all the resulting morphisms are at B. And the same way to take a rep upward position, then see the subcategory where all the vertical morphisms are at B. And if you have both of them, then it's going to be that both um, are subjective, like sitting in both directions. And Hema, which is not too hard to prove using elementary grid techniques. Um, and for the first thing we proved, if we start to understand if you're going back past, past generalizations far beyond most of these stuff. And this one says that if you consider m times 2, well, all, all, all the total morphisms are epiphysms. That this finite type, so that only a set number of indecodables would satisfy this. The doubles being epimorphisms, the more they're all going to be thin, so you get this barcode kind of addition. So here I've drawn like three times two. Doubles now will look like a shape like this green one. So it has some case up and then case down. And we'll stop it to get these this, this shape this kind. So it means that you can actually you can you can do clustering with this and your code. So now but the thing is that of course you cannot increase density forever. You can only choose two different densities. But if I wanted to do single language clustering of different densities, then I can know because I can compute that in the composable and I will get this barcode this description of this type of clustering. And so all the bars will now capture the like clusters downstairs and the clusters downstairs, others and how they connect for choices of density. So initially I thought like maybe okay you can go I don't know to three or five but things turn out to be a bit more difficult than we anticipated. There's um, one of the theorems. This so if you take <coughs> there are subjections in both directions. If we follow this community theorem on the community, we follow this down, down downwards. We say that if you go all at this in horizontal and vertical of m times n have the same representation type. Representations with the horizontal direction of m times n times m. And in turn, we'll have the same representation type as representation of m minus 1 times m minus 1. In fact, the representations, which are subjections in both directions, I will actually run into something which is wild. But it has essentially the same complexity as considering representations of a grid which is one smaller in direction. Which we found this to be quite surprising because uh, consider 1D persistence with only subjections is very simple to show that what the decomposables will look like. But it's clear to the So the result is that we just talked about horizontal uh, mm, is the same representation type as, as so you actually if you have if you have uh, all the horizontal ones are epis, then it decrease decrease the in the vertical direction. So this will have the same complexity as representations of m times one and this representations of a. M, Link River, which is not a final type. If you click setting, so we do, um, we want to multiply clustering, but now we do three slices instead of two. This theorem tells us that this has the same complexity as representations of M times two. And by the way, Yasu and things I mentioned earlier, we need a finite type for M smaller or equal to four. But it's going to be wild for m greater equal to six. So for these subsides, 
uh, is three times zero. Will all be a wild type. I mean, it's a in general, like it's a representation type of the, those kinds of relations is a wild type. We haven't yet shown, or we don't actually know how clustering embeds in this category. If all the um, if all the modules arise for clustering, like they do in, in general persistence by this recession earlier by Carlson and some more when you make the dual items for monos. Magnet for you. So one more slide, the M by two. Yeah. yeah. So is it the case that all the decomposables look like a um a horizontal green line on the top row and then a horizontal green line on the bottom row so that the line on the top row and the line on the bottom row um, overlap uh, vertically. Yeah, so you see that you have some, if you mute, this, so if you have one which is supported in the top row and the bottom row, it's the, the line on the bottom row will be at least as long as the one at the top row. You have to factor through zero. So they will look like this, but you can also have the ones which are only supported on the lower row or the top row. And then the, um, <clears throat> if you were one slide, um, looking at the middle bullet point, um, where you have uh, horizontal epimorphisms is the uh, same representation type as M2, um, which is fine for M less than equal to 4. Can you take the finite um, decomposable summons? Uh, for cross two case and sort of use those to produce the indecomposable summons in the M cross three case where you have horizontal epimorphisms. So sort of can you use the indecomposables from one setting to get the indecomposables in the other? Uh, <laughs> the question for the algebraists, I think. Um, right. My understanding is okay. I'm writing in this chat, yes. So such so wrote in the uh, or did only write to me? I don't know. Let's I thought that there was some chat. Oh, yeah, yes. Johan wrote to everyone that yes, it's okay. Uh, so you have this functor to go from one to the other. So, I just, um, yeah, then it's cool. That's very nice. Thanks. Yeah, I guess I have a question along those lines, or maybe the same questions. So, I, I don't quite remember what same representation type means. So, does this mean like the algebras are Merida equivalent? So, they're Kind of isomorphic somehow. Representation uh, type here is that if one is wild, the one is wild. If one is tame, the other one is tame. If one is finite, the other one is finite. Okay, so then you're saying that. So okay. okay. So suppose you can phrase this in terms of Morita equivalence. Well, it would be much stronger. I think that would be along the lines of what Henry was saying: is that for like for the rejection between the indecomposables, for example, which I don't. Think you have here. Well, yeah. Well, I was asking so much if there's a bijection, but just if there's a, is a way to take the indecomposables in one setting and produce the indecomposables in the other. Oh, uh, well, I think you wrote something in the chat right now. <laughs> As in this case, we have a very explicit way of passing between these categories. So, yeah, so of course for monos, and yeah, so I have to see this a little bit now, but this is what if you have monos in both directions, and look to the right and go down in the orientation of the quiver, and you only get a finite number, and it's also in the right and you only get a finite number of representations. If you go to general, you see that to get an infinite number of representations, and this is more than for sure, it's not going to be, I mean, it's not. Finite in this model case. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, our result. Let's count bars. So let's go have this one D persistence module. And of course, I can decompose it, right, into the barcode. But let's want to know, like, how many of the bars are supported on the full, let's say, interval two and three? 
three. First important two and three in this case. So now if I take my restriction, you know, take a standard representation about here. The bars bars below here. So, so four bars to to this. And see there are two bars with which are on the over like the vertex two and vertex three. I'm gonna get more person of course. So in general it's not hard to see a given like a more given any interval IJ if I want bars on this whole interval it's just rank of the the space over I to the space over J. I mean, it's a mark of decomposition, but yeah. To show that it's just a simple rank uh, computation. So, in fact, I give my full quiver here, like how many bars extend over the whole quiver, it's just going to be the rank from the terminal, from the very initial node to the virtual space sitting of the terminal vertex. Yes, so you can do this already. Post, post set, that's the setting we're working in right now. That's what we move into, yes. Okay. So, in this case, let Q be connected post set. Uh, I don't have to be connected, but then things are a bit weird, so let's assume that it's connected. And let your representation of Q. Now, it can be considered as a functor from Q to the kind of dimensional vector space. Zeros and stuff. Mm. Here's a theorem that not D is decomposable, decomposable. The city V is a functor at the from the limit of V to the cold V. There's an old morphism here. At the rank of the morphism. If one, then the um, a thin a thin and possible meaning that it assigns one to every point in Q and connect them by identity morphisms. If this, then the rank of this linear map will be zero. So this is characterization of uh, thin composables. In, in a Q. So to the bottom left, there are representations of D. This. The left, you know, KKK, and it's not hard to know that, <coughs> I mean, they're connected by identity morphisms, that the limit will be K, the co limit will be K, and they're going to be connected by this identity morphism. So that will be 1. If a diagram, which is indecomposable, is supported everywhere, but it's not thin, as we can see, then that will be k, but the co limit will be zero. So <coughs> it is this is this, this, um, so I mean it doesn't break down, but it shows that it's not a thin sum. So, so I maybe misheard what you said, or maybe. Uh, so did, I think you said all of the maps, it both has to be thin and all of the maps need to be identity maps. Is it going to be identity maps? I mean, sure, okay, but it's isomorphic to one. Which it's the constant functor. Yes. To yes. the one dimensional vector space. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, so I got confused. What if it's the constant two-dimensional vector space, for example? Well, well I mean, I assume that these in the composable, but in this, then you're right. All right. Uh, so yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So in, if you go to D, the <clears throat> the idea is that we get the same question as before. I'm going to restrict myself to some domain. I'm going to look at the restriction of my representation to this domain and count the number of thin summons supported on the whole 
domain, number of constant functors restricted to this domain, when you restrict to this domain, because they're analog to what we looked at earlier. So I can like take any shape like this, this region D, and I'm going to suppose it. We take D, which is intention, we restrict V to D, compose this region in the composables. Okay. Number of the MJs in this in the position, which are the constant ones, is going to limit the restriction to the co-limiter restriction. See that this coincides with what we had earlier, because strict interval of interest, and you get the rank from initial to the total node, which is going to be the rank from the limit to the co-limit of this interval because the initial in the terminal vertex. This means so maybe we are not able to find like understand all kinds of decompositions, but if you give me your favorite um, persistence, then I compute the number of uh, in the pairs somehow moving over that region uh, by all six side persistence computation. And mutation of the ranking variant because now if I take two point B, like from the minimal to the like some A to some point B, then will be from a limit of a thing to the cause initially in initial in the terminal node. The variant actually counts the number of independent features like moving over this, this rectangle region. Simple example, I guess I should run off soon. But I, guess I, I just think there might have been a typo the last one. Uh, it's for there are MJs such that dimension is one for all i in in uh, in D. In D. Right. Okay. So if I consider this guy to the top here, this is in the composable. You see that, of course, you consider the name. The group this is here because this is zero or the terminal verse. Um, but now to the inside is blue. Now get um, this k to k k squared. And you can post this one and two summons. There's, in this decomposition, there's one of them which is thin and supported everywhere. It's reflected in a random limit to a call limit, which in this case is the rank from the k squared to the k, which is k squared to k by the this uh, one. So the is precisely the number of squares in this case, the, the thin one which I support in the whole square. I'm sorry. So you, you say that you compute it with zigzag. Why do you need zigzag at all? I, you can do only with the forward one because it's you know, everything going on. This kind of domain where it's like zigzagging on the bottom. Oh, I see. So, so it's not not only possible when that can go left and down and left and right. Yes, yes. Oh, I see. Okay, so right here and it's a special uh, special. Okay. 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 And like one last slide here about something related is that that when uh, use known algorithms from computer work to for any if it's time while or whatever in this your senior polynomially in like normally in dimension of this representation compute position into the composables one the one the canonical uh, choice for these MI so you just have to choose an element from each uh, isomorphism class Right now, this, all the software I'm aware of is very slow, and we have been starting to collaborate with expert field to make them build some uh, tailored 
hours, which will be much faster in these multiple persistence cases we consider. But the real experiments on my computer, it turns out, at least for clustering, that we're often the are then so not too complex, but I just say because I haven't been able to go into very low cases. Here's a simple example. And so F is just to the cluster earlier it had a point in the vertical direction and I increased radius in the horizontal direction. I have X zero and what you see to the right here uh, to support all the different um, sums in the decomposition. So the one is completely rich it's actually the constant one because it's constant everywhere. It is generally but it has dimension one everywhere. And you see the other one has the other one's doing that dimension so blue blue and most of dimension one in the blue area and zero in the area. But usually you have this one one for the appearing here she has this gray, blue and red. Which is like where it's blue, it's where blue it's two dimensions. What grayish, bluish, whitish what is dimension one and zero that was. So we see how this works in larger data, but well yeah, so as you get added, I thank you here. So that's the last slide. Uh, are there any more questions from the audience or from us? So, you say there is algorithm. What algorithm are you talking about here to compute these uh, parts? So, if I mean um, here, so one then, those blue red ones, which, which algorithm do you compute? Oh, the algorithm I use in this case? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so, that you can use this uh, software package for GAP. So, there's a quiver representation package for GAP. Which also computes decompositions of representations. So, really, it's an algebraic tool. So, so you the indecomposable, indecom all of them. Yes. Exactly. Okay, I see. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm there very slow because okay, it's very really powerful software. So yes, yes. You have these meat tax algorithms and things? Yes, meat tax algorithm. Right, yes. right. Yeah, it's very slow. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Sorry, one minute. So, in one of your picture, you said where you have both blue, and green. which which one is that? I cannot see it on my computer. Excuse me. You have mixing up something. I I miss you. So, if you look, so the second column here, or I mean, okay, the, the third column to the right, you see the one here, which has a white part, a blue part, and a red part. White part. Yes, there is a white part. Okay, okay. The white part, they, they, what do they do? They overlap. So in part, there, there's, there are one dimension connected by density morphisms. Uh -huh. In part, I suppose it's also going to be k squared connected by density morphisms. But then there is some more thing that's happening at the, the border between white and blue. Uh -huh. So, uh, Johan, coming into the chat, so <clears throat> um, I see slightly the um, versions of uh, Epi from M plus N is slightly bigger than the representations from M plus N minus 1. It's more indecomposable, so there's not a bijection between the uh, indecomposables in one case and the other, but, um, but uh, it's concrete how you get from one to the other. So, mm -hmm. um, this result allows you to kind of find the or detect the thin composables. Is that kind of a, a like that's the, the thing is that we are only the from limit column it allows us to capture the thin composables. Which are supported on the full region you, you consider, right? 
but in this slide is that when I set the diagram inside, you see that you detect one thin one in this region, but it's when you consider the full representation. So the top one is actually in the composable. So full decomposition, there are no thins. But when you find one, but it's actually not one in the global picture, just locally. Right. Locally. But each thin de and decomposable has some support. And if you restrict to that support, uh, yes. then in this rank function, yes. rank that support. Or from the limits of the limit, you would get the the number of copies of that indecible in your decomposition. Yeah, at least that number. You could get more stuff coming from things that restrict in a funky way to that domain you're considering. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But if you if you did this for all possible pieces, you could. Yeah, maybe. Uh, questions? Question, Magda. So you uh, you pay particular uh, attention to diagrams where, say, all the horizontal maps were going to the right, and were also epimorphisms. Okay. Um, they allowed both maps to the right and to the left. There are uh, interesting restrictions on the maps you could place there to make it easier to handle. For example, maybe all the maps to the right are epimorphisms and. All Maps to the left or in, are in genes, or, or you know some other such. Uh, 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 so alternate, they're going to so, uh, but over like layers, they're going to have the same orientation. But you're allowed to, to option of the arrow. Is that yeah, which? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I guess will be that if you have like you like go left with an injection. With surjection, that will probably bring to the case of having once in one direction with only surjections. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some duality arguments. I'm not sure what happens if you, let's say, let you actually allow uh, going to the right, only that you're allowed to do injections. You can choose. You know, every morphism is either epi or injection. Oh, <laughs> I think about it. Yeah, that sounds like you could reproduce really any, 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 app, you know, like composing epi. Yeah, exactly. So you can take like you map to the image and then you include the image in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, all right, thank you some more time. So thank you, Magnus. Yes. All right, see you.